Zeus, the king of the gods, watches from the top of Mount Olympus with fury in his eyes and destructive lightning in his hands. The roaring sounds of thunder screaming louder and louder, for it is only a matter of time that a quick and swift move can put an end to this madness. The enraged god witnesses arrogance of man at the highest degree, as a mortal claims that he himself was Zeus while laughing and mocking the divine and depriving the god of his sacrifices from the people. Instead, he ordered that they should be offered to himself. Whispers start to spread around both in town and on Olympus, some accusing him of being a fraud, and others offered him food and believed him. You can just imagine how on edge everyone must have been. Nonetheless, King Salmoneus proclaimed himself as the living echo of Zeus, claiming dominion over the skies and the earth, a mortal man cloaked in the veneer of divinity. He demanded the same tributes and honors befitting a deity, sacrifices, hymns, and prayers directed at his mortal throne. It was never a good idea to anger a god, and Zeus was amongst the quickest to anger. This was a direct challenge to Zeus, the king of the gods himself. The mimicry of Salmoneus towards the mighty god was observed and will not go unanswered. Welcome to the history realm. Now who could imagine that imitating the thunder of Zeus would lead to a downfall as severe as the one faced by Salmoneus? His tale, deeply embedded in the lore of antiquity, acts as a striking cautionary example of the risks inherent in challenging the divine. Today, in this video, we explore this riveting chapter, where arrogance collides with divine power. He was born into the lap of royalty. Salmoneus, son of Aeolus and Enereta, was a figure marked by lofty aspirations from the onset. His lineage stood out not only for its prominence, but also for its entwinement with his brother Sisyphus, renowned for a wit and guile that reached the level of legend. Sisyphus, known in mythology for his cunning ways, was first known for his great hatred for Salmoneus. So, one day an oracle told Sisyphus that if he wed Tyro, the daughter of Salmoneus, and had sons by her, these sons would kill Salmoneus. So he jumped at the opportunity, and somehow, Sisyphus arranged to wed Tyro. She bore him two sons, but when Tyro learned of the prophecy, she killed these two sons so that her father Salmoneus would not be harmed. This horrendous act saved Salmoneus for a short while longer. You would think escaping one fate would humble the man. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep updated on upcoming stories. Now, let's move forward. Salmoneus' youth was one of privilege and power, a breeding ground for a burgeoning sense of self-importance. He was known for his sharp intellect and a charisma that could hold court with ease. Yet beneath the surface of these admirable qualities simmered a restlessness an insatiable desire for more. He was not content with terrestrial authority. His eyes were ever skyward, envious of the reverence the gods commanded. As he ascended to the throne, his ambition swelled like the tides. Where others saw a ruler, he envisioned himself as more, a deity in the making. Rumors swirled that he sought not just to be king, but to be worshipped, to have his name uttered in prayers and his statues erected in temples. But there was a method to his madness, a calculated progression towards his ultimate blasphemy. He began to draw parallels between himself and Zeus, the king of gods. His hubris was such that he no longer veiled his intentions. He wanted to be seen as Zeus's equal, if not his superior. I wonder if Salmoneus even started to cheat on his wife as much as Zeus. But anyways, it was this escalating pride that laid the foundation for his most infamous act, the emulation of Zeus's thunder. A chariot wrought of bronze was built. He commanded its wheels to be lined with bronze to clatter against the stones, mimicking the celestial rumble of Zeus's thunder. To the sky, he hurled torches, imitations of Olympian lightning, casting a false brilliance over his kingdom, a brazen mimicry of the gods' almighty bolts. His antics transcended child's play. They were calculated performances crafted to dazzle and dominate. I can imagine Zeus trying to ignore Salmoneus, but hears that loud, annoying chariot and just snaps. Anyway, the reactions of his subjects ranged from bemused disbelief to outright horror. Some laughed behind closed palms, others watched with wide-eyed fear, for to mock the gods was to invite calamity. The bards and poets of the time, guardians of oral history, began to weave this folly into their narratives. In the divine realms, such hubris could not go unnoticed. The gods, with their omniscient gaze, looked upon Salmoneus' actions with mounting wrath. It was one thing for a mortal to achieve greatness, quite another to feign a seat amongst the pantheon. 
Ancient texts, like the works of Pausanias, recount how the deities perceived these sacrilegious displays, not as a challenge to be met in battle, but an affront that demanded swift, unequivocal retribution. On a side note, make sure you like the video if you're enjoying this story. Okay, back to the story. Sisyphus was the founder and first king of Ephira, also known as Corinth, and he promoted navigation and commerce. But Sisyphus was very deceitful. He killed his guests and travelers in his palace, which was a violation of the guest obligations, which fell under Zeus's domain, thus angering the god. Among other things that he did to anger the gods, like the times he cheated death. For example, the first time, after dying and descending into Hades, audaciously managed to capture Thanatos, the personification of death, and chained him up so that no humans died thereafter. Only the intervention of Ares resolved this crisis, and death was eventually freed to pursue his natural work. But Sisyphus took pleasure in these killings of guests because they allowed him to maintain his rule with an iron fist. I imagine Salmoneus receiving an invitation for dinner at his brother's place, promising a killer meal that even Zeus would approve. Anyways, Sisyphus, the brother of Salmoneus, was no stranger to the gods' watchful eyes, known throughout Greece for his shrewdness and devious intellect. His craftiness was legendary, often bending the will of both mortals and immortals to serve his ends. Unlike Salmoneus, whose hubris was loud and ostentatious, Sisyphus operated in the shadows. The contrast between the brothers was stark, yet despite their different methods, both were ensnared by their hubris. Salmoneus was struck down in a display of Zeus's power, while Sisyphus faced a more cunning punishment, one that matched his own cunning, a ceaseless task of pushing a boulder uphill only for it to roll down each time it neared the top. One might wonder if Sisyphus, upon hearing of his brother's fate, perceived the echo of his own impending doom. The myth leaves us pondering. Can one man's downfall be a lesson for another? Or are some lessons only learned when it is far too late? Anyway, at the zenith of his hubris, Salmoneus's imitation of Zeus provoked the thunderbolt of divine retribution. Zeus, with a sovereign gaze and a hand that wielded the forces of nature, unleashed his fury. A single bolt of true lightning, a surge of untamed power was all it took to halt the mortal's charade. It struck him down and destroyed the city with a ferocity that rent the sky. A clear message that the throne of Olympus was beyond the reach of mortal whims. Virgil, in his epic Aeneid, immortalizes this moment of cosmic justice. He places Salmoneus in the depths of Tartarus after death, where the might of Zeus's anger is echoed in the eternal torment of its prisoners. In this dread realm, Salmoneus endures a punishment befitting his offense, an everlasting reminder of the folly of equating oneself with the divine. This depiction in literature does more than recount a mere tumble from favor. In the wake of his fall, Salmoneus found no reprieve. Condemned to the infernal pits of Tartarus, he was subjected to the relentless echoes of his own feigned thunder, now a grim chorus to his suffering. The once proud king, who sought to wield the storms of Zeus, was left to languish in the shadow of his shattered dreams. Now share your thoughts in the comments below. Did Salmoneus's fate surprise you, or did it seem the only end for such hubris? Well, if this tale of mythic ambition and divine retribution has captivated you, don't let the story end here. I have left a video offering another amazing story into Greek mythology on the screen here. Like and subscribe to support the channel and hit the bell icon to ensure you don't miss out on our next journey into the past. Until next time on the History Realm.